welcome to a very special edition of Straight Talk, presented by Renata Limited, one-on-one -on -one conversations with newsmakers and opinion shapers. I'm Dhaka Tribune editor Zafar Subhan, and my guest this evening needs no introduction. I've made smoked rice water with alu bharta. I've used the white soy to marinate the fish with ginger, cumin, and coriander, and I've also made a salsa. Beautiful. This is the type of food that you wouldn't see in a restaurant anywhere. So it feels scary, but it also feels extremely rewarding to do this as my finale dish. This is powerful food. To have the heart and the soul of the dish be all about something as simple as rice and water and seasoning. You know, it is powerful with history and it is powerful with flavour. It's just such a beautiful contrast between the beautiful pillowy potato, the rice, the smoked water, and then that oily fish with that crust on top of it. Kishwar Chaudhary has spent the last few months captivating the world with her performance on MasterChef Australia. She made it to the final round, and while she did not win the competition, in every true sense of the word, she emerged a winner. She won the hearts of audiences worldwide in the respect of her judges. But what made Kishwar's performance on MasterChef Australia truly remarkable was the fact that she chose to use her time on the show to showcase and highlight Bengali cuisine. Myself. And it's not fancy. So I don't know how good it is, sorry. <laughs> Just because it's a dish that nourishes you at home, doesn't mean it doesn't have a place in the master chef kitchen. Yeah. And flavor trumps. She could have taken the easy way out. She could have cooked dishes which were more familiar to the judges and more familiar to their palates. But she didn't do that. She wasn't trying just to win a competition. She didn't try to take the easy path. She took a big risk. She used flavors, spices, in dishes which were utterly unfamiliar to her judges but she wanted to show them and she wanted to show the world just how amazing Manla cuisine could be. Everyone in here is on their own journey but I think yours is very much different. Being in here has really really um, unleashed for me a whole new side knowing what my heritage has already taught me, what my parents and grandparents have taught me. And I'm just, I'm determined to do this in this kitchen and outside this kitchen. Oh, that looks amazing. That is one of the most delicious things that I've eaten this year. The ultimate food dream is to write a cookbook with Bangladeshi food and Bangladeshi flavours. If I don't do that for Mika and Serafina, it's going to end with me. And I really want to pass that down. For Kishwar, it wasn't just about me. It was about honouring her mother, her grandmother and her culture. It was about showing the world just how superlative Bangla cuisine could be, and she succeeded. The judges were absolutely wow, as were her fellow competitors. Now the whole world knows what we know, that Bangladeshi food is one of the wonders of the world. And for that, we have one daring young woman from Melbourne to thank. Welcome to Straight Talk, Kishwar. Thank you for making the time for us. And um, I should just say, that, I mean, I'm sure you're a big star in Australia. I think you've captured the minds and the hearts of the audience there, and in fact, worldwide. But I think I can safely say there's no place you're a bigger star than here in Bangladesh. Everyone has taken you very closely to your heart, to their hearts here. Oh, thank you very much. Um, I don't actually know what to say when I get told that. Um, I get thousands and thousands of letters from all over the world um, and especially from Bangladesh and Southeast Asia as well and the audience there because I think they can relate to seeing me or someone like me um, and then seeing someone like me for the first time on this platform I think has resonated with a lot of people. 
But I think absolutely. And I think what really, you know, sort of impressed everyone was how you chose to showcase Bengali cuisine, you know. And, um, you know, and for us in Bangladesh, you know, I mean, you probably know some 70% of all the Indian restaurants, quote unquote, so-called Indian restaurants around the world are actually owned and run by Bangladeshis, but it's usually serving Indian food, it's not Bangladeshi food. So we feel that we're kind of, you're kind of putting Bangladeshi food or Bengali food on the map a little. That was something which really resonated here. Yeah, I think it's closer to something like 86%. There you of, go, um, you have the numbers. Oh uh, uh, yeah, the, the, I'm the numbers girl for you. Um, are owned and run by, um, Indian restaurants are owned and run by Bangladeshis, um, not serving Bangladeshi food. So I guess, I guess in my journey, honestly, it was very unrelated to that. For me, it was about passing something on that's part of my heritage and being of third culture, um, being born and brought up here in Australia. I yeah. feel like I'm that bridge between my that's parents right. yeah. who have um, sort of worked their whole life. They came here almost 50 years ago so they were very young when they came here my mum was all of what 18 19 years old my dad was um straight after 71 he was a freedom fighter and then he came here as a young master student himself and they met and got married here so to take that entire sort of like their cultural identity and their identity through food and language and the arts and um to hold on to that um of something that they left 45 years ago, um, I feel like I'm that bridge between my parents and my children, and it was sort of my duty to pass that on. No, I mean, I've heard you say that in, um, on the show in previous interviews. I think it's a very powerful image of being that bridge, because, of course, what I think came through to me watching you is that, of course, he, those of us sitting in Bangladesh were, you know, very proud of your Bangladeshi heritage. But of course, you know, I think as you are proud of that, you're equally proud, if not more proud of the fact you're an Australian and that what you yeah. really wanted to do was join those two cultures. And on my, I, I, I visited Australia on um, a couple of occasions, actually. And what I have found is that, you know, I mean, I think it's a wonderful thing to actually see how this new Australia with people from all over the world is kind of being inventive, it's kind of being created and you're being a part of that, I guess. Yeah, absolutely. I think every um, every country does it differently. When you when we talk about the UK um, or America, Canada, um, all of these countries that have very, very multicultural, they're like melting pots, these cities. Um, New York has had this very um, layered migration of all of these different cultures and Melbourne, the city that I was born and brought up with, is now facing sort of um, the next wave of migrants. You have a lot more Indians and Bengalis and Nepalese people who are migrating um, in the last 20 to 30 years. So it is about what is your culture? What is the culture of this city? What is the culture, not only of a country, but every single city um, and region has their own little melting pots. Like, um, you know, even the food in my house. Yes, I came onto the show and spoke about Bengali food, but in my home, there is a huge place for Middle Eastern cuisine, Vietnamese um, cuisine. Like, I'm not a week goes by where we don't order pho or just go to our local sort of... And, um, Vietnamese place and grab a banh mi. So it's someone else's food culture that they bought here is also part of my home and a part of my identity as well now. Yeah, very much so. Of course, I have a different take on, on the Bengali cooking. Like uh, most people will say, well, you know, this was really daring. And then a lot of people have been uh, very appreciative of the fact that you are showcasing Bengali cuisine. I was thinking to myself, is this even fair? You know, it's kind of like, you know, you're taking a bazooka to a knife fight. I was like, well, of course it's going to do well. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> you know? I was like, come on. Oh, yeah. oh, there you go. You're uh, What a proud Bengali. You're, either you're a fantastic cook or your mum fed you really well. <laughs> no, but no, seriously, um, I mean, it was well, really wonderful yes, to see I, the things you were doing. But any, any Bengali who's very proud of their cuisine would describe it that way. I'm going to remember that one. <laughs> And, and what 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 for you now, Kishwara? You mentioned uh, you've mentioned a cookbook that you said that that's something you really want to do. But you know why why just a cookbook? I mean, I know you got a day job and everything else, but if you thought of really kind of you know I don't know 
you know, we mentioned restaurants at the start, and you said that's not really your thing, you know, you're not coming from that space. But, you know, a Bangladeshi food restaurant would be a marvelous thing. And, you know, maybe it would, it would be unfamiliar to a lot of people, but I think you have shown that, you know, that there is a, uh, there is a demand that, you know, if, if you have high quality Bengali cuisine, people can appreciate it, you know, uh, people who have a, a taste for stuff like that. So is that something you've thought of or have been people been pitching it to you over the last few weeks? Yes, absolutely. Uh, over the last couple of months since I've been out of my chef. Um, yeah. So right now, during the last couple of days of Eid, I've actually been in Tonka's Kitchen with Adam De Silva. That's a yeah. um, an amazing um, one-headed restaurant here in Melbourne, and it's probably the founder of Southeast Asian cuisine and bringing that onto sort of Australia's, uh, well, Melbourne's food tapestry. Um, so I've been working with Adam, and I actually released a part of my menu tomorrow because we went into lockdown i was right. going to release my menu of Anka, um on the 29th of july um so what will happen is we'll have a couple of the dishes go out um through the delivery and that's been pushed forward to tomorrow so hopefully if we come out of lockdown i will be serving bengali cuisine and elevated bengali cuisine and my food um from tonka as soon as we open up again Oh, brilliant. And that's just the first step. Who knows where that'll take? Now, I have to ask you, like I said, you know, you know, we tend to here in Bangladesh, everything sort of revolves around us, you know, and I said, but, but do you ever come back to Bangladesh? And do you, you know, do you plan a victory tour now, now that you've done yeah. this? Believe me, you're like a rock star here. So I mean, if you were. Um, the pedestal that you're putting me on is very, very high. Um, something that I'm very, very wary of is um, yeah. I really believe in what I said, um, it was very genuine in MasterChef and coming off MasterChef, I still truly believe in what I set out to do. I don't feel like my work is done. And for me, I came out and hit the ground running, whether in terms of getting that book deal, working with Adam De Silva, working under um, Chef Yamoda. So as far as um, where what I've achieved, yes, um, lots of people are speaking about Bengali and Bangladeshi cuisine because of MasterChef and because it has a huge international reach and platform. Yeah. But um, in terms of my work, I'm very, very um, grounded and I, I literally cooked in a kitchen all morning, came back, put on the shirt to do an interview with you. So in terms of my work, I'm very, very grounded in my work. Um, not a victory tour, but I definitely, as soon as um, the situation is safe, will definitely come to Bangladesh. Um, my in-laws live in Bangladesh, and I have such a huge there as well. So I will come and come come to Dhaka. I miss it. It's a big oh, absolutely. Party. Well, I mean, Matt Preston came here a few years ago, if I'm not wrong. I remember that actually. And you know, everyone, you know, and he was a and Matt and Claire as well. Um, and it was great, you know, and, uh, and I think people yeah. love stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. they you know, they love again, like I said, you know, there's you'll find a very warm uh audience here, a warm reception, and people like things which are, you know, which is a bridge, you know, as you said, between Bangladesh and you know countries uh, elsewhere. We yeah. we we welcome that. You know, we have uh, you know things like, you know, I don't know. One of the things which Dhaka Tribute which I'm involved in is the Dhaka Lit Fest, where it says that it brings Bangladesh yeah. to the world and it brings the world to Bangladesh. So that kind of cross-cultural communication is something, you know, we're trying to, you know, um, emphasize these days. So, you know, you could be part of that. And as you said, this is where yeah. your family is, after all, your in-laws. It's my family and also just even food culture in Dhaka. Um, yeah. uh, before, before MasterChef, I don't know where it's going to all fare up now, but... I think one of the favorite things to do was just, you know, you gather your friends and you go to all your favorite Dhaka eats. Um, I'm someone who just gets on a rickshaw, goes down and um, eats at my favorite Chakuti and Fuchka place. So I don't yeah. know if that's going to happen this time around. Yeah. But um, yeah, it's about getting out there. I miss Dhaka. I miss the food. I miss the social scene. Um, and I can't wait to come back. Oh, well, we'd be, we, you know, Everyone would be very, very glad to see you. And you're right. I mean, I think, you know, of course, the pandemic is, is, is difficult for everyone. But for a culture such as ours, which has got so much to do with, you know, people gathering and going out and doing things and going places, having to turn all of that inward has been more of a challenge. But, you know, like I said, the food delivery yeah. places are doing very well. So it's, it's, it's not nothing, you know, it's not nothing. The food is still no, there. And so we're not being able become, to go places. Yeah, and people have become so... Um, innovative but also honing in on those skills in terms of food delivery 
yeah. places. Um, there are just so many fantastic um, home cooks and pastry chefs and people who have been honing that skill because of COVID. And now you can sort of um, reach out and have that delivered online. And um, Bangladesh it's just a has thing. a really good platform. Yeah, yeah it's become it a big thing, actually. Really you have online. a lot of websites which yeah. are doing stuff just like this, and you get marvelous food. Exactly. Home cook, they'll yeah. deliver it straight cloud, to your cloud. door. It's very professional. It's very easy for people to start um, passion projects, but then really grow that in a very meaningful way. And the food quality is fantastic as well. So tell me a little bit about um, the cookbook you had mentioned, because that's something you've talked about quite a bit during the course of the show. So where does that, uh, where, where is that um, at present and when can we hope to see it? So um, I don't have a timeline for the book at the moment but it is something that I'm right um, I hope to launch that soon it is about me my journey and my food yeah. um, be, you know being a third culture Australian Bengali um, child that's that's what the cookbook is about and it's also a lot of it is due to my journey on MasterChef so I can't wait to share that with everybody Okay, well, we can't wait as well. So thank you so much, Bishwa. This has been really wonderful. You're very much in demand. So thank you so much for making this time to speak with me, speak to our audience here in Bangladesh. I know they will have really appreciated it. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. And um, Eid Mubarak to everybody and your audience and every, everyone watching. And thanks for having me. Thank you, Eid Mubarak. In conclusion, I'd just like to point out how fitting it is that Bishwa's star turn on MasterChef Australia came this year when we're celebrating 50 years of independence here in Bangladesh. The world is finally beginning to sit up and take notice of Bangladesh, from the red carpet at Cannes to the World Economic Forum, where Bangladesh's economic performance has been featured and celebrated. Now you can add Bengali cuisine to the elements of our culture that the world is learning to appreciate. And for that, we have Ishwar to thank. I hope you've enjoyed this half hour and getting to know Kishwar a little bit better. I've certainly enjoyed it. I would like also to thank MasterChef Australia for um, their assistance in making Kishwar available. I would like to thank our sponsors, Renata Limited, uh, who are presenting this show. And once again, a very big thank you to Kishwar Chaudhary herself. Here's wishing her all the best in the future, and here's wishing all the best for Bengali cuisine. Thank you very much.